Okay, so I found this old code and this 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 just blows my mind. This is crazy. Um I was trying to just for fun kind of work on the collats problem. Um and I was just working with paper and I was kind of looking for you know if you if you look at the numbers um, like strings you can kind of see them as like basically binary and look for patterns um, in like substrings but I found this old code and that I've worked on that for like hours today and I, and yet I remember doing something that I had no idea how to reproduce it it didn't make any sense and I remember doing some kind of algebra where I had like a polynomial. And sure enough, I found these old files. Um, I didn't know if I still had them or not, but apparently they were written in, in Python. And sure enough, I, I found them. There's a constant and then a factor. Um, but I can barely understand my code. I mean, look how crazy this is. This is insane. Like... I'm calculating some kind of ratio between I don't know what you know I don't know what exactly what that is um, between maybe like the constant in the, in the factor um, that I'm I'm proving or something um, but I mean here like I have like this little math file and one of the functions here just just tests like a collats integer and you see it reduces it down to one now i know i messed around with it in the ti calculator and haskell and Pyth and um like lisp and stuff but this man i mean i i don't remember what i was doing and look at this just how crazy this is so we have like a Notice these 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 ones that say proven. So this is a schema. Um, and notice how this this factor times p is less than this factor times p, and then this factor or this constant five thousand thirty four is less than this this constant nine nine thousand seven hundred and eleven. Now, I know that this is always going to be less than this thing on the right. No matter what p is like any positive number it's going to be true and so then i say that it's proven and so now i can multiply i can put i can substitute this p for any like integer i can put one there two there five there whatever and then i can sort of check off all you know, I can sort of check off all possible, you know, generations of this and say, you know what, that collats number that that's proven to, to reduce. I don't need to like calculate it. Basically, I can just produce that number and then sieve it out. Kind of like when you calculating all the prime numbers, you don't have to test each indiv individual prime. You can sort of start with all the numbers and sort of just erase the evens, then erase the odds um, that are multiples of three, and then erase the remaining ones that are multiples of like five, and so on and so forth. This is kind of like a sieve rule right here, where I'm like deleting all the multiples of, you know, 19,683 times p plus 5,834. Or something like that. I'm not really sure. It's it's like a schema where this left side is less than the, the right side. So I think this is like this shows that um, it reduces to get smaller. So as long as I can show that like things are being reduced, let me just run this so there's just one copy. So to prove the collapse conjecture would. Is, you know is true one idea for for doing that is basically to show for each number that eventually you'll get to a number that's at least smaller than it and if you can you know if somehow that was possible to do that which 
it might be extremely tricky um, that you know could potentially prove the entire conjecture because that means that no matter where you start you'll get smaller and smaller and smaller eventually but this man like this video I mean it's not gonna be a normal video because usually I know what I'm doing but here I don't I'm I'm trying to remember what I was doing I mean this is this blows my mind I mean I know I understand like the first one because I, I kept remembering that I had done something like this and I was just like I remember I started with something like 2b you know 2 times n where n is any positive number and that that's true because any even number it's it's obvious that it reduces but then you have apparently 3n plus 1 um, is less than you know is less than 4n plus plus 1 um, or, or something I don't know so this is this is all numbers are gonna be less than you know twice the number okay that's fine but is this saying that like I don't get what this is saying is this saying that like if I start with um, four times the number so let's say I start with four times seven and I add one okay then I get 29 but three times seven plus one is 22 29 times 3 plus 1 is 88. If you divide that by 4, I guess you get 22. So this, this actually makes sense. Because actually, if you start with set, if you start with 7 here, you'll get 29 here and then if you apply the collapse conjecture to it you'll eventually you'll get 88 divide that by 2 you'll get 44 and divide that by 2 you'll get 22 how did i figure that out i don't even know how i figured that out that's that is crazy and then i remember and i remember this from so long ago I like it's somewhere in the back of my mind but i remember there was some some grouping here where all of them are unproven which kind of stinks in a way i guess because it doesn't all i remember about this is each of these lines that are proven like sieves out an entire infinite you know set of numbers but the the issue is i remember somehow i remember all I remember about this is it sieves like everything out. If you want to try to see if it sieves everything out from the number between like the numbers between 1 and 100, it does it pretty well. Except for like one number. I I, I don't remember if it was like 73 or what it was, but it fails for like one number in such a way that the 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 schema is like bigger than that the number of steps or or something i don't i don't remember but basically i couldn't prove it because of just one counter example basically like it it's like i mostly proved it and then there was like a small a seemingly small catch to it essentially um, and this entire section is unproven schemas because these right ones you know are not bigger like 512 is not bigger than 729 um, man and this is the code for, well, no, not that. This is the code for that one. 
this just blows my mind. It's crazy how much you forget. Like, I forgot. I found some old, like, StarCraft classic, you know, logs where I played online, and I was like, wow. I could see my old chat logs because of one of these mods. And it's like, you know, I don't even remember some of that stuff word for word or, you know. Oh, man. It, it looks like code that I, I sort of remember it. And, you know, I remember using term, like, I would write a recursive function using helper so that you you don't have to pass as many variables into it um, but I don't I'll have to look at this because I don't I don't really know what this all all does like I know this divides it by two and this checks to see if it's odd um So, I guess the factors and the constants, you just divide by two. If it's even. Oh, and if the factor. Hold on. This checks to see if something's even. This, is it seeing if it's odd? Or what is that? It's it's seeing if the last if I I'm assuming if the last bit is one, then that means it's it's odd, right? Does doesn't it? I don't know why this is, I guess that can be f multiplied by three, but I'm not sure. 32F plus 23, 27F plus 20. So that means like, okay, so if I just substitute F for something, so if I have 32 times, let's say five, right? And I add 23 to it. Okay, I get 183. Multiply it by 3 and add 1. You get 550. Okay. Divide by 2. I got 275. So 27 times 5 plus 20. Oh. I got low battery. That's 155. So, do I have to reduce the 275 more? Oh my goodness, I do I eventually reach 155. That's insane. That is totally insane. So, it's a recursive Did I figure all that out? I don't even get. I don't even understand. I still don't even understand what I was doing. Apparently, I had some kind of recursive, like, schema going on.
Well, anyway. <sighs> I'll see if I can explain it to you guys later. So I'm back here. Um, so notice this program that's running. Um, this is this was actually the code for that. Um, it's checking these numbers. Um, I'm not sure particularly this one how like what the the order to selecting these. It might be a reverse collapse, um, but it looks like it's more like a a breadth first. Um, reverse or something and it's showing it's calculating which schema fits for for proving that number I guess and so some numbers are past the point of being proven so yeah oh this would be where 71 shows up I guess because here you have 71 and then you have like 91 um, without the schema previously being proven and I, I think I was going to try to prove that um, if the schema came before it then you could prove it otherwise you can't really prove it because um, it's, it's it doesn't get smaller basically it doesn't normalize if you will um, the way I was I was trying to but let me explain how so I'm gonna run calc alge and this is actually the code for that. And um, I'm gonna explain because I I remember how it work, kind of how it works now, in a sense. And I'm gonna explain what all these groups are for. And I this explains why some of them why it's not doubling every time. So it's not like two four eight sixteen. Like you'll see, there's two 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 four six. And I'll, I can explain why that is. So, if you start, if you start just with all no possible numbers, you can think of or all natural numbers. You can think of it as one times a, where a is a natural number. Now, if you were to iterate that, the, there's no way to really iterate that in a way that it's proven that okay, that's just going to work for the class conjecture. So we just move on to a different way of representing this. So we kind of split it in half and we say, well, there's even and then there's odd numbers. So so even numbers can be thought of as 2b plus 0 and odds can be thought of as 2b plus 1. Now, evens are proven because it's you know, we just take the the even number and we and we know that to iterate it we cut in half. And that's less than the original number. So there, now we have a schema that's proven. And now we don't have to break this one apart. As soon as one of the schemas is proven, it's like the end of that tree branch. But the other one, the odd numbers are, are still unproven here. So it's like, okay, well, how do we prove, you know, maybe further branches of this? How do we represent... 2b plus 1 in in different cases so here I split it again into 4c plus 1 and 4c plus 3 where c is a natural number so for let's say c is just 1 then this could be the number 5 okay and we know I guess 5 iterates into 4 eventually because you know that 5 um is odd you multiply it by three and add one you get 16 and then you divide it by two twice and you get you get four and i guess that's true because of the fact that you're multiplying um because of the fact that you can just divide by two a few times and you can multiply by three I guess you can start with any number um, for C that you want. So you can start with like, you know, 13 and this still works. So you can say, you know, 13 times four plus one is 53. Okay. And 
since that's odd, you multiply it by 3 and add 1, and you get 160. You divide by 2 a bunch of times, and eventually you get to something that should match that. So 13 times 3 plus 1 is 40. So so the schema, I guess I figured out a schema that that worked where where a variable could be um, put in for the factor. And then I basically f to figure out the constant here is well, if you're splitting apart the odd numbers into, I guess, the next level up, um, instead of looking for every other two numbers, you're looking at every other four numbers um, of the odd numbers. So every other two of the odds, then you're going to have like a 4c plus 1 and a 4c plus 3 to kind of cover both of those cases. Of course, the scheme I came up with with the second one is unproven, so then I split that apart into two cases but it turns out that both of these are unproven so I have to split each of them into another case so that's why there's two here and then there's four here okay and three of these are unproven so only those three are split into two and that explains why there's six here so for each of these three cases um, only two of them have a sub branch which is proven. So this one's proven and this one's proven. So anything that's 32 times a natural number plus 23, I can prove that it gets smaller. And as long as I can prove that it gets smaller, that um, would be enough to for a proof of, of induction to say that the Klatt's conjecture is true. As long as I can as long as I can prove eventually somehow prove that all you know, numbers get at least just get smaller at some point with all these schemas. But as you can see, it gets really complicated. You got like a whole set of these, and you got a lot of provens. But now they're they're only proven like these more specific cases. And there's the set of things to prove just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And it looks like there's some sets actually just naturally occurring um, I don't think this is coincidence but there's like an entire set here which is just unproven and that you know I'm guessing there might be some reason for that there might be some explanation for how that comes into play but I have no idea maybe looks like it might be every other one Nope, not, not every other one, but yeah, that's, it's a lot, and, and I think I, I just remember I did the math a little, a little more at some point when I, when I noticed that the sieve was not really going to work, I don't think, um, without higher level reasoning or something. And I eventually had a circularity where I reduced something back to the, just the Clad's conjecture, but it wasn't smaller. And so I couldn't prove it. But, oh man, just trying to... Just, just the challenge of backtracking and trying to figure out what I was doing. I mean, that was kind of fun. That was kind of cool. I mean, you can see... You can even see the binary representation of these numbers here... Um, just to kind of show like what actually I don't even know what that number I don't even know I don't even know what that number represents 3,450 456 Not, not really sure. 
what that is. But anyway, just thought I'd share some of this interesting um, result with you guys. So these interesting, I guess, numbers that I'm calculating. But anyway, that's uh, it for now. Thanks.